Ah, Paris. We're standing at the feet of a grand 18th century structure called the Pantheon. But we're not here to talk about the Pantheon. No, my friends. Scanning around the square, which is more of a circle, we get to this building. This is the mayor's office, or mairie, for the 5th arrondissement. And it's here that the first Lenorama festival took place in early May this year. The event was put on by a very organized group called Le Paris Tricoté, or the Knitted Paris. The event took place in a space normally reserved for weddings. It was spectacular. So right away, La Bergerie de Marina set the tone for the show. She raises 250 Limousin sheep. That's a French breed known primarily for meat, but the wool is wonderfully lively and strong for things like garments. Minus the scouring, which still takes place in France, everything here, socks, hats, yarn, which is naturally dyed, was produced within a 50 kilometer radius. We move on to La Ferme du Beau. This is Katie. She's originally from the UK. She and her husband raise Hampshire sheep, also known primarily for meat, but capable of growing wonderful fleece. Katie also buys wool from other sheep farms in the area, and she uses it to produce yarn that she naturally dyes. Still staying with farm fibers, we have Plume des Moutons and Company. In addition to running a B&B, Cecile raises Angora goats and a small, diverse flock of sheep. She had these needles, which were made by a neighbor. Aren't they beautiful? Now, Cecile has her yarn spun, and then she offers it both in undyed skeins and in skeins that she has dyed using natural dyes. I had to come home with this gorgeous chocolate brown skein that had come from, hello, this sheep. She also had bags of unprocessed wool and mohair. Moving on, we head to Normandy. This is Stephanie. She raises Presale sheep. They graze on the salt marshes near Mont Saint Michel. But she's adding another star to the sheep's crown by transforming their wool into a yarn that she scours and spins locally and then dyes herself using natural dyes. This is Brebilene. Everything here is from her flock of 17 sheep and that of a friend. She told me how people have gotten better about paying more for hand-dyed yarn in France, but they still need to make progress in understanding that an undyed skein of true farm yarn made in small batches is just as valuable. Now, you can't have a wool event in France without berets. And unlike the cheap plastic imports you'll find in souvenir shops around Notre Dame, the ones made by these people are the real deal. As the sign says, our beret is made exclusively of 100% French merino wool. It's local, adjustable, waterproof, crush-proof, timeless, incredible, and thus indispensable. This group was formed in 2011. In our small workshop, we create 12 berets a day in 15 colors and six sizes. A beret is made in 13 steps using 750 meters of wool yarn or 113 grams of fiber, relying on 180 years of savoir-faire in one birthplace, Le Béarn. And there it is. There was also a pure felt artist on site. She had beautiful works including bowls, and I loved this faux sheepskin with locks that have been needle felted onto a wool backing, and she also had insoles in different colors. There were also a surprising number of woven goods for sale, including here at the Felletin Weaving Association booth. They also had two looms set up and were doing weaving demonstrations all weekend. Meanwhile, on the stage overlooking this grand salle de mariage, you had a group of intrepid stitchers who helped create this wool-filled coverlet. They were using a specific technique called la couverture piquée. And this is Marie-Claude. She helped newcomers such as myself figure out the technique so we could chip in and help finish this in time for it to be auctioned off at the end of the day on Sunday. And no, I didn't win. As is required at any good yarn event, there was an umbrella swift in steady use throughout the weekend. Elsewhere on stage, there was a spinning demonstration that captured the attention of the younger visitors. 
Having rested on stage a bit, let's get back down the stairs and see more of the show. You can't have a yarn event in Paris without having one of the godmothers of French hand-dyed yarn, if not the godmother, and that would be La Bien-Aimée. While Aimé herself was in the U.S., her skillful deputies, Julia and Lolita, held down the fortress. This particular yarn always captures my attention. This is Volute, a very delicious 50-50 cashmere merino yarn. Right next to La Bien-Aimé was a newcomer who was mobbed the first day. This is Lucia of Wooliette, a brand that was only launched two years ago. And if you couldn't tell, Lucia loves brushed mohair. Lucia sources her yarns from Italy and the UK, but that doesn't mean France doesn't have a mohair industry of its own. Right next door was one of my favorite discoveries of the show, Mohair d'Ardèche. A husband and wife team, they moved back to the country from the big city of Lyon. He took a class on raising Angora goats five years ago, and the rest is history. They currently have 60 goats, and they castrate the boys and use their fleece as it ends up being the cleanest and finest. And it is fine. Their mohair can be 23 to 24 microns. Hello! <laughs> anyway, that's stunning compared to a global standard of 28 microns for quality kid mohair or even 32 microns for super fine yearling. And you can tell the minute you touch it. I loved these people. Back in the realm of hand dyers, here is Christelle of Tricot and Stitch. She was quite popular for her super fun hand dyed yarns in both electric shades, but also really beautiful muted ones. Her dream is to one day vend at the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. Maybe we can make this happen? Another very popular hand dyer was Les Chevaux Solidaires, and that's Lily. Proceeds from sales help fund medical research to find a cure for a very rare genetic condition called McCune Albright syndrome. And since 2018, they've raised over 120,000 euros for the cause. I'm sure they added several thousand from this event alone. We had a guest from Brussels. This is Natural Dyer by Night Creations. Another natural dyer was Kamalen. And among their yarn bases, I was particularly curious about this one. Made from 90% French Angora, 5% Merino, and 5% Silk. Oof. Nearby was Maison Septembre, or the House of September, another natural dyer that also had a handful of undyed, very woolly skeins. Hand dyer Sur la Rive Cotelaine had some beautiful yarns on samples as well, and she was doing swift business. In addition to those vendors who had brought machine knit socks, Suri Kate was there with hers, and she also had her sock knitting machine cranking out socks to show people how they're made, and she was also selling the finished products. We have three more vendors, and I loved each of them. First off was La Nola, which is a play on the word lanolin, a mother-daughter natural dyer of yarns for knitting and embroidery, and also crochet. I was very excited when I saw they had this, a Merino d'Arles. So these sheep, descending from Merino sheep brought over from Spain in the 1780s, a pocket of them were crossed with local sheep in the south of France, and slowly this distinct breed was born. They also had lace yarn, and they had recently acquired the renowned maker of naturally dyed wool embroidery thread, Renaissance Dyeing. To see all those colors in person was rather mind-blowing. Another natural dye newcomer was Céline of La Fabrique Poveda. Céline started her studio in 2019 and then had to shut it all down when the pandemic came. She had no following or website yet. She had no way of supporting the business. But that gave her time to perfect her work. What's cool about Céline is that she sources all her own wool down to the fleece. She picks the fleeces, skirts them herself, and then has them spun to her specifications. She had some cool blends, including a brand new base with a touch of Angora in it. Between her impeccable fiber sourcing and her natural dyeing, I'm very excited to watch her grow. And then finally, this one, Brunel Lievo. Now, I don't know 
whether it was the fibers or the colors or just talking with David, the man behind it. But I'm still moved by this yarn and I so want them to succeed. Based in southeastern France, they raise around 150 sheep merino organically. They have the yarn scoured and spun in France and then they dye it using natural dye stuff. They have no online ordering, no glitzy logo, no marketing scheme, just really lovely merino yarn. You can email and they'll send samples and ship abroad. I got a skein of the indigo and I gotta say, I give it a squeeze whenever I need to be reminded why wool matters and why I love what I do. All in all, I cannot imagine a more successful or auspicious beginning to what I hope will become a beloved annual celebration of wool and yarn in a beautiful building, in a beautiful city, for those from around the world who all love good yarn and good wool. Thanks for joining me.